Hello friends and colleagues, I'm here to sit down with you today and talk about troubleshooting. Uh, this is a topic that I don't really feel like I see discussed enough either for clients or for professional piercers in professional forums and it needs to be because it's important. So first of all, what is troubleshooting? Let's talk about it. Well, the dictionary definition is to solve a serious problem for a company or other organization, or to trace and correct faults in a mechanical or electrical system. And that's a great definition because I think when we all think troubleshooting, we immediately think of like some IT guy fixing a problem with a computer and things like that. We think of troubleshooting whatever is going wrong with our laptop or our desktop. And it's still similar, but a little bit different in piercing. In piercing, troubleshooting is helping a client who's having problems with their piercing. So we all have heard of the dreaded bump, Everyone's talked about it, getting bumps or irritations on your piercing. Troubleshooting is us helping figure out what's causing that so you can get it to go away. And it doesn't just stop there. Troubleshooting can also be helping clients with older existing piercings that are randomly flaring up and having problems. It can be helping clients with piercings that they have to retire and remove in order to heal up correctly, or helping clients who are just, for whatever reason, something's not going right with their piercing. And a lot of folks don't realize that this is part of a piercer's job. A lot of clients are under the impression that you go, you do a piercing, you put jewelry in, you tell someone how to take care of it, and bam, your job's done. That's what being a piercer is. Maybe you do some cleaning and some inventory, uh, but that's pretty much it. And it is not. I would say, like, half of our time spent with clients is spent troubleshooting and assisting during the healing process. Our job does not end when you walk out the door. Our job ends when your piercing is healed and healthy. That means piercers should be providing you with assistance throughout the healing process. Because you're not a professional piercer, you're a professional whatever you are. And it's not your job to know everything about body piercings and know everything to do when your piercing has a problem. So what does troubleshooting look like? Well, a client reaches out and says, hey, I have this piercing that's healing and it's got a bump on it. I don't know what's wrong. And ideally we like to get you to come in in person. In-person troubleshooting is always gonna be the best. We can do a little bit virtually, but in-person is always gonna be superior. And we take a look at the bump. And honestly, a lot of troubleshooting can happen just from having an experienced piercer take a look at what's going on because the size and shape and location of the bump can tell us a lot. Where a bump is located can tell me if it's happening because your piercing is crooked, if it's happening because the anatomy was incorrect, if it's happening because placement was wrong. The texture and color of a bump can tell me if it's happening because it's a moisture irritation, there's too much moisture in the area, or it's too dry. Color of the bump in the surrounding skin can tell me if it's happening because of a jewelry sensitivity or a reaction to what you're wearing. And some of troubleshooting is just common sense. If someone comes in with a bump on their nostril piercing and the piercing is straight and the jewelry is good, but the client wears a ton of makeup and there's a bunch of foundation caked all up in their jewelry, it's probably the makeup. Don't put makeup on your piercings until they're fully healed, please. <laughs> um, and so we, we kind of get to the bottom of what might be causing this issue. We work with the client to suggest changes or modification to aftercare or jewelry. Sometimes we do have to suggest removing or retiring the piercing. If a piercing is crooked, if you didn't have the anatomy for it, if it's placed wrong, it just has to go. No one likes that answer, just like no one likes being told, your computer's just broken, you need a new one. Um, but sometimes that is the answer. Uh, and so it's us working with a client to help correct what's going on with their piercing. And since I know many of you are visual learners, I've got a great example of an advanced troubleshoot today because troubleshooting is really important Yes, for those basic small issues, I snagged my piercing, it's got a bump on it. My piercing was done crooked, it has a bump on it. I got sick and now my piercing has a bump on it. But it's the most important for difficult or complicated healing issues that are not gonna be an easy one, two step fix. Now, if you're generally seeing a good piercer, getting good piercings with good quality jewelry, any bumps or issues you have will usually be an easy one, two fix. But there's always those outliers that are very complicated to troubleshoot and this is where a piercer that's very experienced in troubleshooting comes in handy. So for this example, we have my wonderful client Sloan. Sloan has a doth piercing that is being a little shit. <laughs> she has had this piercing for four years. She got it done by a good piercer, an Association of Professional Piercers member. She got it done with great jewelry. She got some solid 14 karat white gold from BBLA. That shit was not cheap. 
She takes really good care of her piercing. She's incredibly responsible, incredibly diligent. She's good at what she does. But despite all of this, she has dealt with irritation bumps and issues on and off for the entire four years that she's had this piercing. And that has made this piercing uncomfortable. It's made it look unattractive. She's had to deal with people going, oh, what's wrong with your piercing? Um, it's just not been a good experience with body piercing. And unfortunately, while she saw a good safe piercer with good jewelry, that was not a piercer who was very experienced at troubleshooting and just kept kind of telling her, oh, clean it more, just clean it more. Uh, and that obviously wasn't working. She reached out to me, she found me, she was like, Lynn, please, I'm desperate. I want to save this piercing. Uh, you might be able to help me, like, please. I had her come in in person, I took a look. Here's some pictures of how it was looking. It had this little bump on it when I first met her. Um, it fluctuated in size. Sometimes it got really, really big. Sometimes it got small, but it never went away completely. I did a thorough in-person assessment. I went through the history of the piercing, all the stuff she'd tried, everything she'd used, everything her last piercer would try. And I said, okay, I think I can save this. Let's give it a shot. And so the very first thing that I did was we swapped the jewelry, we swapped the material and the style, and we changed up some of her aftercare routine and kind of monitored it. And when I do complex troubleshooting like this, I do regular virtual check-ins. So she was sending me pictures every couple of weeks throughout this process. Now, when I sat down and decided to start this, I said, I think this is gonna be, it gets worse before it gets better. I'm gonna be changing jewelry in this. We're gonna be changing up a bunch of stuff. This is gonna unsettle the piercing. It's probably gonna get angrier, but my hope is it will get it to go down. So here are some progress pics. We can see I swapped it to this captive bead ring from Anatomy Metal, and it did get grumpy. It did not like me changing out the jewelry that was in it. Um, we did go to a slightly thicker gauge. It didn't like that either, but Sloan was committed. She trusted me as a piercer. She trusted my judgment. She trusted what I was thinking. Um, so we swapped it. We monitored it. Next update, it's getting a little bit better. It's still not great, but it's getting there. We stuck with a very strict cleaning regime. I was checking in with her constantly, monitoring how this was doing and improving, and now we start to see it going down and going down and finally totally gone. And then we monitored it for months to make sure that we had 100% actually defeated this bump that had been plaguing her for four years. Uh, and as you can see in this last update, it stayed gone. We finally got this piercing to heal. Uh, and since these photos, we've swapped her back to her cute little heart from BVLA. It's healthy, it's happy, it's well behaved. After four years, this piercing has finally healed and is finally happy and not giving her problems. And it's thanks to troubleshooting. Now, what actually inspired me to make this video is I posted about this client and her experience with her doth on TikTok, and I had a piercer reach out to me and he said, Lynn, I have a client with a doth piercing who is having similar problems and it's causing her a lot of pain and discomfort. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help her. I've never been taught proper troubleshooting skills. Uh, can you help? And I've been working with him privately through Messenger, um, but it really hammered home for me how many piercers don't have this education and don't know how to help clients in these situations and thus how many clients are getting frustrated having these bumps and these problems with these piercings that are causing them pain that are causing them issues that are just not fun to deal with and they keep going back to their piercer and just getting told clean it more just getting told, well, I don't know what to tell you, and who get disheartened and discouraged with piercing and think that piercing just isn't for them or decide to give up it on entirely. And I don't wanna see that happen. I don't wanna see people give up on piercing. I wanna see clients be able to work with piercers and get the solution for these issues and realize that there are piercers who can help you with these problems. As an aside, we can't help with every problem. Sometimes the answer is just removal, sometimes we have to just take it out and start from scratch and that's okay and that is a normal part of the troubleshooting process. Now a lot of times I'll get asked, well how did you learn to troubleshoot like this? How does someone learn? How do piercers get this education and this information? And it all comes down to a quality apprenticeship or quality time spent with experienced piercers. I personally am very fortunate enough to consider myself pretty experienced at troubleshooting and that's because during my apprenticeships, which if you watch my video here on YouTube about my apprenticeship story, you know I had three of them. So I spent like five or six years apprenticing between all of those. Um, and during that time, I got to watch other knowledgeable, experienced piercers troubleshoot. So I get to see clients come in, I got to see what the irritation looked like, see what my mentor 
diagnosed it as, see what the solution was, and then see the client come back and see if it worked or it didn't work. And troubleshooting was a huge part of my apprenticeship. Um, and not only that, but as part of my apprenticeship, I was fortunate enough to work with a dermatologist and a dentist to learn about issues that they saw in their practice with piercings and things that they use for treatment and how they approach things from a medical standpoint. So I not only got to work with very experienced body piercers about how they troubleshoot and deal with problematic piercing, but I got to work with medical professionals about how they see piercings, what they encounter, and how they approach things. And there's really no replacement for this type of hands-on training. Um, there's no like class, there's no podcast. It's really about being in person and seeing these irritations and issues and seeing how they get better and being there working with the client every step of the way to learn what to do in these situations. It's kind of no different than folks who are becoming doctors doing medical residencies and learning about properly diagnosing patients, what type of tests to schedule and run, and how to figure out what's making someone get sick. You kind of just have to get hands on and do it. So if you're a piercer watching this at home and you're realizing, I don't know that I know a lot about troubleshooting, um, reach out, reach out to piercers like me, reach out to other piercers, ask if you can come shadow and learn, um, get educational resources, but there's really no replacement for hands-on. Now, when I talk about this, a lot of clients will say, well, can I troubleshoot my own piercings at home? And the answer is actually yes, to a certain degree. Obviously, you're not a professional piercer with years of experience, so you're not going to be able to just look at a bump on your piercing and go, ah, this is caused by exactly this, and this is what I'm going to do to get rid of it. And I wouldn't expect you to be able to, but a little bit of common sense can go a long way at home. For example, if you're toweling off after a shower and you snag the heck out of your piercing, like you have that moment, we've all been there if you have piercings, where you feel your soul leave your body and you were like, ah. Oh that's probably gonna cause a bump. It's probably gonna cause a bump. So if you snag or catch or damage or irritate your piercing really good, switch to babying it. Clean it extra, be gentle with it, maybe message your piercer and say, hey, I yanked the crap out of my piercing. It's really sore and tender, can you help me? Um, if you're at home yourself and you get sick, your piercing's probably gonna get sick. You got a healing nose piercing, you have a cold, you have COVID, you're blowing your nose all the time your piercing's probably gonna get irritated. And as long as you're sick, your piercing's not gonna be able to get better. Take care of yourself and your piercing will heal. And the more piercings you have and the more you learn how your body heals, the more experienced you will get with this. Now that kind of knowledge does come from experience. Just like for piercers to learn troubleshooting comes from the experience of working with a more experienced piercer and seeing and learning all that. So if this is your first or second piercing, I don't expect you to know all that. And if you're ever unsure, reach back out to your piercer, use them as a resource. If you get a bump or a problem with your piercing, don't ask Google, don't ask your friends, reach back out to your piercer. It's part of our job to help you. So for clients at home, troubleshooting is absolutely a part of a piercer's job. Use us as a resource. Let us help you heal your piercings. Healing is a team effort. It takes both of us. And for piercers, make sure that troubleshooting is a part of your education and is a part of what you offer as a piercer. And make sure that if you don't know how to fix a certain solution or don't know what you're working with or dealing with, reach out to another piercer. Make friends with other more experienced piercers in your area. Ask them if they can help you if you have a client who's having a stubborn issue. If they are, ask if maybe you can come to the client's checkup and sit in and learn. And if you are an apprentice, make sure troubleshooting is part of what you are being taught. If you are only being taught how to pierce, you are not being given a complete education. Troubleshooting should be a part of your apprenticeship curriculum. As per usual, if you like my videos, please hit like and subscribe. And if you liked this one, kind of talking more about the professional aspect as well as the client aspect, or if you just wanna hear me talk more about troubleshooting and dealing with these problems with piercings, uh, let me know in the comments down below and hopefully we hang out soon. Have a great day, y'all.